Hello everyone, welcome to our Fire Behavior course. It's good to now be joining you in this, this brand new course we'll be running and rolling out to help assist with educating about fire safety and fire behavior in general. What I'm gonna be doing in this short video is just giving an overview of all the different sections of the course so you can see how it fits together, what's included and also what's not included. Uh, because I mean, this will be a first course in fire behavior and there are many concepts we will not be covering and that would be then further reading and, and a sort of an advanced course in fire behavior would need to cover. But in terms of explaining the different sections, what I'm gonna be doing now is just illustrating them on a traditional time, time temperature curve relative to typical fire behavior. So normally a sort of typical enclosure fire, fire will start, will have ignition at some point, temperature in the room will gradually rise, then we will get through to flashover, there's a rapid rise, through to our fully developed phase, and then finally our decay phase. Now, I'm going to explain everything in relation to this curve, so you can see when, where each chapter of our, our course fits in. And as the first section of the course is just the introduction, figuring out the overview, figuring out where we are. But then after that, we're going to be going into thermochemistry. Now, thermochemistry is how do things burn and how hot are they when they burn. That relates to the entire course because no matter what you're doing, it's always a question of how much heat is released and how do things burn, how do we cool them down, etc. So thermochemistry spans our entire time period. It, it, it's inherent within all components of the course. Often we don't actually do thermochemistry and, and chemical um, stoichiometric calculations, but it's still in the background of everything we're doing. And then after uh, thermochemistry, we move on to heat transfer. And once again, heat transfer covers the entire range. In every part of the course, there's always conduction convection radiation occurring. So we will use it throughout. And that's why I cover it right at the beginning as a building block for understanding the rest of the work. Now, once we have the, the heat transfer rate, then we will start going on to fire plumes. Now, a plume is then once, once you've got a small fire or a larger fire and it's releasing um, heat and it's releasing gases, etc. So we'll have our plumes in the sort of growing phase. Once we've had ignition progressing through, we will then look at plumes and then how do they plumes behave? How do we calculate them? How do we calculate the temperature above a plume and smoke being emitted, etc. Once we've covered then smoke plumes, then we're going to go into steady state burning of liquids. Once again, further down here on the, the curve, generally that would be linked to plumes as well because you would have a, a pool fire. This would maybe be your crude oil tank. Your crude oil tank is now on fire. And how would the steady burning of a liquid work with that? And then it would be linked, as I said, very closely to fire plumes. Once we've done that, then we will go through to looking at ignition, the initiation of flaming combustion. So we'll have a look at ignition. How do we start? But ignition doesn't occur at only the beginning of a time temperature curve. Uh, that might be the start, but also, for instance, my chair is on fire, it's burning, and then the couch next door also catches fire. Now, how does my couch catch fire, and then, or is my crude oil tank burning, and then when will the other crude oil tank at X meters away catch fire as well? So ignition can also occur as this spreads to the next part of your dwelling or your industrial facility, etc. So ignition is very important in that respect. And then also in terms of that work, in terms of spread, then we'll get to a chapter on spread of flame. So once a curtain is ignited, once a piece of cardboard is ignited, once something is ignited, how does the flame spread across the surface? And so that would be more in this earlier phase as we are transitioning through to full, um, full room involvement. How do we have a spark, a small flame, a candle transitioning through to my entire curtain on fire or my entire wall or my entire whatever on, on fire. Once we have done then spread of flame, we're going to go to pre-flashover. Pre-flashover then is you know, in this transition period here. Uh, sometimes it is defined as a point. Sometimes it is defined as a, a phase, um, so from our growth phase into our flashover phase, and we'll be looking at, at the pre-flashover compartment, um, the energy released into a compartment, and then how does that 
uh, relate firstly to plumes and those likes. How does the hot layer build up? How does it affect the room, etc.? And then after that, we'll go into the, in the next chapter on then our post flashover compartment. And this is very important, especially on the structural fire side. What are the maximum temperatures that your building could experience? And how do you design your building to resist those? So that will be then all within our post flashover compartment section. And then finally, you'll be introduced to modeling of fires. And this once again covers the entire timeline. How do we consider modeling? How do we approximate this behavior in computer models. It's not going to be a detailed section, it's just to let you know what models are out there and then how you might try to simulate this behavior using a, a piece of computer software or spreadsheet or whatever it is. Okay, and with that, let's continue with the course.